Hello folks and welcome to XCOM Chimera Squad. Having just finished playing X, uh, Warhammer 40k Battle Sector, uh, and we're waiting for Warhammer 40k Chaos Gate Demon Hunters in May, I'm playing a couple of games now, just to scratch the edge. We're playing uh, Warhammer 40k Sanctus Reach to scratch the 40k edge, and we're playing XCOM Chimera Squad to scratch the XCOM edge. I have played XCOM Chimera Squad before, um, but it's been a very long time. I played it to completion, I finished the game. Um, so I wanted to go back and revisit it and see what happens, see how it how it's going from there. Um, for people who haven't played XCOM Chimera Squad, because it was kind of polarizing when it came out, because it's not really an XCOM game it, like XCOM is. The scale is it's it, it's more like probably an XCOM Apocalypse in scale. Um, it's set after XCOM Two, like in the universe where um, the Resistance won. Because XCOM Two is of course what happened. XCOM 2 is set when XCOM 1 loses, basically. The, the whole way that XCOM 2 works is that it assumes that XCOM 1 lost. The aliens took over, and you're fighting the Resistance for an XCOM 2. This is XCOM Chimera Squad, the Resistance 1, um, but they're now humans on Earth. So there are now aliens on Earth. Basically, the Earth is now a kind of a cosmopolitan. All the alien species that were in XCOM 2 now live, in, um, live on Earth. And Chimera Squad is basically the XCOM multi-species police, I guess. It's more of a police and more of a SWAT team rather than, you're no longer like the special forces, in inverted commas, because XCOM, <laughs> XCOM soldiers aren't anything, are very special. Um, but yes, you're more of a police unit rather than a, um, you're not fighting an invasion, we're basically policing, um, but yeah. I have played it before, but I'm going to keep the tutorial on because it provides narrative. Uh, it provides a narrative start. Um, I'll keep it on normal. Um, I play Iron Man usually, but uh, I don't do it when I'm recording because in case saves screw up or whatever. And considering the game updated and we're running a 2K launcher, I don't want to mess around with having to mess around with saves. We'll play as intended and we'll just go. Godmother. Hey, Godmother. Is this Terminal. like the old days? XCOM swooping in and taking it to the bad guys? I wouldn't know. I spent most of the world training resistance networks. Like mine. And for your many long years of service. Watch it. XCOM attaches you to an untested squad and pushes it into the field before it's ready. How is this not like the old days? I'm just happy to be here. I'm a sheriff during the war. Wish I could have pulled my weight. For which side, exactly? I find that very hurtful. Sure thing, Advent. <clears throat> we are through the checkpoint. I was never actually Advent. But they were fitting you for a blocky helmet. Stow it, both of you. We're here. 3-1-PD gave us the all clear. Grab your gear and prepare to move in. Yeah, serious post stuff. Also, one of the things people didn't quite enjoy so much, but I quite like, is that unlike XCOM, you're not a meat grinder. You have fixed characters Respect. with fixed personalities. And what's Verge's ETA? Comms are working, obviously. Verge is en route. How? Verge can't drive. He, um, he hailed the cab. To a hostage situation? Focus. Whisper, any surprises in the next room? A handful of hostiles, unaware of your approach. Chimera squad, take positions. Prep for breach. Ah, breach mode. Chimera Squad begins every mission by setting up at breach points to get the jump on enemies. Preview the enemy presence at each breach point and red affairs that can, will be applied, and assign agents to enable to the available slots to determine the order they are Again, we haven't got a, it's, it's not a, we're not a, we are a police unit, so you do a lot of breaching and clearing of rooms and hostage, hostage missions and so forth. Um, you don't have a meat grinder, you have fixed units with fixed names and personalities and there's a lot of banter between them which I quite liked. Like it's it's XCOM themed, but the flavor is very much something like um, like a SWAT game, for example. Um, I guess the door kickers and stuff like that. Anyway, I quite enjoy. It. Let's carry on with this. I'll, you'll see as you go along. Anyway, so this is a main door. Main door has three sp spots in it, and successful shots on enemies will be crits. Basically, whenever you breach, every breach site has specific bonuses that will be applied. 
Uh, we have Cherub, Godmother, and Terminal R3. Cherub has a pistol and a and an energy shield. Godmother is a shotgun user, and Terminal has a, a rifle, but is, is our medic. Basically, is our is the engineer type medic slash engineer from XCOM games. Uh, Godmother is a shotgun assault, and uh, uh, Scarab is like just a shield uh, pistol user. Anyway. Encounter one of three. Missions are, instead of having a massive map, mission, uh, missions tend to be like a series of encounters in multiple the smaller maps with breaching in every, at every level. Breach. Breaching in. Breach targeting. Cycle through available targets with tab and left shift and use any... Then use a selected ability with enter. So we have target over there. That trooper is alert. That trooper is surprised. I seem to remember what, uh, if they're surprised, they, you get additional hit percentage to them. Like this, this one is pinpoint because all hits were critical. So that's right. Uh, in which case, we're going to go for go for this one here. Breach fire at you. Uh, you response level alert. Alert enemies will use an ability at the end of breach sequence. Basically, yeah, everyone who is surprised um, have a, has a defense penalty and won't act. If they are alert, once the breach is complete, they'll have they'll have an action. So let's stop the uh, breach one from having a turn, and uh, terminal can kill this one here. There we go. Hello, I am Mayor Nightingale. Is that our hostage? Welcome to City Thirty One's Memorial Museum. It's just a recording. As I often say, the lessons from our past inform the present. Blah blah blah, history. Focus. Agents and enemies take their turns at one at a time. Their current place in the turn order can be seen on the unit flag above their head and next to their portrait in the timeline, which both update after each turn. Agents have two action points each to use for movement, shooting, or abilities. Look for a blue shield to move into cover for defensive bonuses before shooting or move out to flank the enemy for a better chance to hit. Use the timeline to determine when enemies will take their turn in order to neutralize them or protect teammates. Some advanced abilities and equipment allow you to manipulate the order of the timeline. Some actions like shooting will end the turn regardless of how many points are available. So, we have Cherub now. You go next. You have a turn next. So, can we deal with you? you move over here, you've got cover. Move over here, you've got cover. Move over here, you will be... You can, it'll, be it'll be a dash, however. Um, move up to there. And can we just shoot you? 81% on you, 65% on you. Hostile's gone. Right. Uh, Godmother, you have your turn before this guy comes around, so. See, if you look at, look at over there, you can see can see the target, can see the target. Target previews. And go over there. You're in the open, but hopefully, 97% chance. Yay, camera Target through the wall. Down. And that's this room clear. You see this? Huh. Interesting. Contact. Clear. What took you so long? Had to unpack a breaching charge. Good man. Not exactly. You know what I mean. I always do. So creepy. Don't ever change. Verge, form up. Any hostiles in the next room? Yes. I can feel them. So we all end the round? In the division exhibits? We breach the next room. Multiple breach points and turn order. Some encounters offer more than one breach point, with different risks and benefits. Consider whether to split the squad or send them all to the same location. Agents entering from the same breach point will enter the encounter together and be closer in the timeline. The order the breach points will enter is shown next to their name and can be changed using the arrows. So here we go. Here we go. So we have agents damage likely. So these ones are the ones that are going to be more dangerous. Whereas the last unit through this entrance does three damage to the breach. So we have. We have Cherub, who is a hybrid. 
Um, Godmother human, terminal human, Verge is a sectoid. Uh, we'll put we'll put Cherub and Godmother in there. Cherub is breaching, Godmother's shooting. We'll put Terminal and Verge up there. And uh, hang on, does Verge go in? For, Verge goes in first. Terminal goes in second, I think. Because Terminal gets plus three to damage, and I can't remember what Verge uses as a weapon. Oh, he uses a rifle as well, so it's actually relevant. Actually. She uses an SMG, he uses a rifle. Okay. Breach. Stay behind me. Time to breach. Right. So. Aggressive. If we don't kill you now, you will have you will shoot at the end of the breach sequence. So let's try to kill you. Good. You kill 31% chance to hit you, so that's not great. So we will just focus on killing things that we can. Up top. You have targets up top to be concerned about. And you... 50-50 on that guy. Roll the dice. Roll them bones. You're going to cover, and because you're alert, you get to use an ability. To hunker down. Each agent has a unique ability they can use every turn, eventually gaining more abilities from their class and equipment. Most agents also have the Subdue ability, a non-lethal attack that is low damage but guaranteed to hit. Use it to earn additional rewards or such and mixing objectives. Cherub uses the Charge Bash ability instead of Subdue. Okay, so what do we have here? We have Charge Bash, Kinetic Shield. Cherub places an energy shield on self or ally to prevent all damage on the next attack. Cherub gains one charge when the energy shield is destroyed, which does not automatically end the turn. And charge bash. Turb bashes an enemy with all the sh energy shield consuming all charge. If a charge is consumed, deal damage in a cone behind the enemy. Damage increases with charge, replaces subdue. So, who's next? Who's number two? You are. Can you just try to bash you? Charge bash. 100% chance to hit for three damage. Right, you have you have subdue. Strikes the target, basically renders unconscious. Unconscious are captured at the end of each mission. And and scatter shot is just a shock and provides a cone of damage. Go over here. Can you subdue this guy? Two to three damage is not guaranteed that you'll get the kill here. Let's try nonetheless. Hostile subdued. You yeah. missed the shield! <laughs> right, who's next? Verge. Verge has a fire gun, stupor, cyanically stuns a target for one to two actions and adds them to the neural network, cannot target enemies in the neural network, and battle madness makes an enemy go berserk. So I'm gonna go over here, and you're gonna stun. You're gonna stupor the target there. Your mind falls away. You're stunned for two turns. Let's go bash him with shields and stuff. And you've got a you've got a heal basically. Uh. On the run. You can't knock unconscious. You can safeguard. Sends the gremlin to an ally to restore four HP. Cleanses burning acid and poison. Grants twenty defense. Terminal can't target themselves with safeguard. But does not automatically end the turn. Uh. Overwatch. Overwatch needs an angle to do the Overwatch in. You don't have Overwatch everywhere, you Overwatch in a specific angle. So might as well Overwatch there, but there's no real reason to. Right, Cherub. Move over there, and Shield Bash. Right, three people unconscious. Set up the breaching charge. I do like to make an entrance. Breach mode. Explosive entrance. Some breach points can only be accessed with special equipment or abilities. Once an agent with the required asset is in the first slot, other agents can then be assigned. So Verge, Sir Cherub gave the breaching charge to Cherub. So Verge gave to Cherub can use the breaching charge there. All non-aggressive enemies guardians entrance are surprised. So there's nobody alert. They're either aggressive or surprised. Everyone's gonna go in. Uh, Verge, Terminal, Godmother. 
breach. Wait, hold. Hostage confirmed in the next room. We need more than that. 3-1 PD has a live feed. Patching through. If you surrender, I will advocate leniency. Enough. This exhibit, it is about XCOM's role in our liberation. I see you read the placard. It doesn't say how they went soft and got weak. Now, it's up to us to light the spark. He's holding a detonator. Go, now! Making a path. Alright. Nobody's aggressive, so everyone's, everyone is surprised. Everyone is surprised. Nobody's... A, n uh... Who's got the best stuff? Low cover, good angle on you. Well, let's move along that. Killing anyone who's... Try, try for the breach. Or we can go cover rush as well. If you can cover rush, so we gain bonus... Basically, if you don't dodge, you gain bonus defenses until your first turn. Let's kill what we can. Easy. We'll cover rush. Cover rush. And you can go for... Try 61 there. That hurts. Protect you. Oh, hello. Cherub is down. Terminal, stabilize him. On it. Verge, with me. Protect the mayor. Lots. Lots. Agents looted all HP will begin bleeding out over several turns, indicated by the number of the turn timer. The mission will fail unless the agent bleeding out is saved using the stabilize ability, or the counter is completed before the timer expires. Because they're they're fixed characters, they cannot die. They are not allowed to die. Um, stabilize. Can we get what, you? Who are you? you are a hardliner. Are oh, you the hardliner? Okay. Protect the hostage, and that's the enemy we gotta kill. Right. Let's move up to. Hmm. There's no real good place, is there? I can battle madness you. You go berserk. Hopefully, it means you shoot the guy in front of you. Expunging target. Yes, but you bloody missed. Actions available one. Fine. Have it your way. 36. We'll stupor the second one. Your thoughts are mine. We are part of the neural net. They're, they're linked to Verge. Verge can do shenanigans with that. Uh, we're gonna go for safeguard. On we're gonna gremlin stabilize, there you go. Gremlin stabilize on Cherub. Unconscious. You got one action left. You can try. Just a graze. Ha! You got nothing on me. Okay, Godmother in hell. Could have subdued there, couldn't I? I could have subdued that. Oh damn! Hostile mist. Terminal, you need to do something about that real fast. Move up there. Can you stun? The guy who is going to overwatching. You turn for one turn. Okay, terminal. Stabilize the mayor. That was probably a mistake on my part. Um. Right. Sixty-two percent. Try. You can subdue there. But that's going to be two to three. So just shoot. Target. It was the training. Target weapon in sight. Can't touch this. 
I was gonna, I keep wanting to do a, to do a um, thing, but I can't, can I? Um. That armor is a problem. Of what removed? Headed worm needed. Keep to cover. Barely got through the armor. <sighs> I want to see if I can melee you. I want to see if I can get you unconscious. Reload your shotgun, please. Reloading. Target weapon in play. Are you going to get an Overwatch shot? 100% guarantee for free, aren't you? Yes, but I do want to bash. You can't subdue because he's already stuck to your net. You can't do anything else because they're already in the neural network. Uh. Overwatch. I will fire if they reposition. Terminal. Gives us options. You know what? Move terminal just so you get. Into the you, you can bait the that. Let the high tech spray do its work. Safeguard for extra defense. Kind of irrelevant. And get over there and take him. Take him prisoner. Arrest him. the target. Mayor Nightingale, are you alright? It looks worse than it is. Those medicates are really something. Compliment accepted. What about Chero? Yeah, I uh, think so. Only thing injured is my pride. And your diaphragm. And a few ribs. None of this should have happened. Most people say thank you. I'm, I'm grateful, of course. But these people don't have the capability for any of this. Explain. I read their threat assessment. A month ago, these insurgents were all talk and no capability. The greatest threat they posed was to bottles of alcohol. Why tell us? Why now? City 31 shows the world how humans, hybrids, and aliens can keep a lasting peace. I'm the public face of this. Tonight, someone wanted what I represent to go up in flames. We're not in town for local intrigue. I know. But right now, you're the only ones I'm certain are fighting for that same peace. Can I count on your support? Yes, ma'am. There we go. From the five captured enemies, you gained 20 intel. Package delivered to 31 PD. She truly believes what she says. Why she's in charge? Not too shabby for our first official mission. Don't do that. Don't do what? Celebrate before a mission is complete. It's... It's bad luck. Oh, damn. Building rank two field teams of each type unlocks something, something, something. Tonight, Mayor Nightingale perished in an explosion at City 31's Memorial Museum. The identity of her assailants is unknown at this time. The city council asks citizens to remain... So she gets vaporized the same day XCOM sends Chimera Squad to our city? You hear that voice in your head? That's me telling you to wake up! Despite opposition, Mayor Nightingale's deciding vote brought the reclamation agency to the city. Without her support, Chimera Squad's continued presence is an open question. Yeah, basically we're an untested... Welcome home, Chimera Squad. Kind of a the director wants mess. to speak with us. Thanks for getting the mayor killed. Also, you're fired. That's not helpful. You're right. I'm sorry. I'll patch the call through when you're ready. I followed your action at the museum and its aftermath. Director Kelly, I take full responsibility for what happened. Stop. I sent you to City 31 because I believed you were ready. Tonight, you surpassed my expectations. 3-1 PD requested help within three hours of your arrival in the city. You answered immediately. Going in, you were under-equipped and down an agent. You adapted, as we trained you to do. And let's not forget, you rescued the mayor. You delivered her to safety as the city requested. Don't blame yourself for an outcome you couldn't control. Instead, let's focus on what's next. I set up the map table. Ready when you are. Head over there. I'll hold. 
Right, so we are back in our headquarters and we can go to the city map, which is the world Welcome map for XCOM. During Advent's occupation, the city was a fortress supporting an active starport. Five years after XCOM won the war, it's home to aliens, hybrids, and humans alike. There's new industry, self-government, and local agriculture to support the varied populations. Against all odds, this city thrived after the war. There were no retributive attacks. Until tonight. We don't know that. Not yet. But we can find out. 3-1-PD requested our help sifting through evidence at the Memorial Museum. They lost good officers today. Give them what they need and see what we can learn. The map is where you see the status of City 31 and any current targets we can send our squad to. Chimera squad can respond to one target per day, after which the day automatically advances. Targets come in two types. Missions are tactical targets, the squad will go into combat on these, or situations are strategic targets, the squad will take care of the situation without entering combat. The current targets change every day, so watch the city carefully for new priorities. So we can go to situation. There are nine areas in the cities. The Angler's Point, Riverside, Renova Heights, Highland Square, The Stacks, Old Town, The Fringe, Switchyard, and Downtown. 3-1-PD needs help pouring through the aftermath of tonight's attack. Mayor Nightingale's death has the city on edge. Let's do what we can to help. Sending the APC to resolve the situation will automatically advance the day. Are you ready to proceed? Yes. We've done what we can to aid 3-1-PD. Commissioner Maloof passed along her thanks for helping her officers bear the weight of this attack. Your work with 3-1-PD opened a few doors. Here's what we know. A crude plasma bomb killed the mayor. The insurgents had no access to materials for that. Does that mean they had outside help? Most likely. There are three groups in City 31 with access to this kind of ordinance. And there's three factions to deal with. There is, and you, you basically get to choose which faction to focus on, and then when you dealt with one, you got to focus on the other one, and then the other one after that. Yeah, the, the target faction cannot be changed until it's resolved. So we have the loose network of human scions. Their vision for City Colonial's future is entirely psionic, whether the city wants it or not. The progeny. Grey Phoenix, an organization of alien scavengers. They have quietly amassed the kind of weaponry reclamation is mandated to recover. Or Sacred Coil, an underground religious movement for hybrids. They preach salvation, but only to those who once fought XCOM. Um... I have no particular... I, th I think I did Grey Phoenix first on my, my previous playthrough. Or did I did Grey Phoenix last? I can't remember. Let's get a dice anyway. We'll do a D... We'll, do, we'll, run a, we'll roll a D3. Or rather a D6 and then turn the result into a D3. Two. One, two. Three, four, five, six. The progeny it is. The progeny have a small but loyal human membership. All with psionic capability. Victims willingly hand over what the progeny need. And forget the whole thing. The perfect crime. Director, these are local criminals. Isn't that 31 PD's jurisdiction? True. The Reclamation Agency supports local police, but we're also required to recover dangerous material. From those who would do the world harm, and each of those groups is neck deep in the stuff. So what next? Focus on a single group. Investigate, dismantle their operations, and take them down. Meanwhile, we look for any links to the mayor's death. Either way, a dangerous organization is off the streets. Exactly. The city wants justice for Mayor Nightingale. This is how we help them achieve it. Every investigation has three stages. Groundwork. From this first mission, learn about the faction and their methods. Operations. Hidden missions that must be revealed, then completed to knock out the faction's main plans, and then the takedown. Stop their final attack and end their threat to City 31. Basically, every faction you have to basically do the first mission, which is to learn about the faction mission, and then you do the the, the, the large middle bit, which contains a lot of stuff, basically advancing the plot of that faction. Then you stop the faction completely in like a in a uh, in a uh, like set piece final encounter. So investigation, the progeny in progress. We need to know more about the progeny before we can proceed to our investigation. We don't know what happened. And there's no dark events. No, we have no idea who the leader is. Progeny leadership is entirely psionic. Consultation with the Templars suggests a human with powerful psionic capability. Visit the assembly area. Hey, check it out. Headquarters sent us an assembly. And with the right patterns, we can build anything. 
or we could with the latest version. What you're looking at is the extremely finicky 2038 model. It'll take time to stress test our patterns, but once we have them, we're good to go. Assembly projects are now here to get access to new or better equipments. Each project can unlock new items for XCOM, new supply, new weapon or armor upgrades, or a variety of other useful things. Agents assigned here decrease the time it takes to complete a project. You can advance one assembly project at a time, which takes multiple days to complete and usually costs resources such as Illyrium. You can assign an agent to assembly duty to speed up the current project, however they will be unavailable for missions or situations. Illyrium is one of three resources Reclamation requires. It is spent to complete projects in the assembly. So we can do Android personnel. Construct the Android OPS hub. This network allows us to use Androids in tactical missions and enables new assembly projects. It means you have costs 10 Illyrium, 2 days, gains 1 ATU, Android units are purchable and supply, unlocks all entry level assembly projects, so we need to build it anyway. Begin. We can assign somebody here. If we, if we want to, but right now, it's okay. You can now recruit an agent to your vision, and there's a critical mission we have to complete. So look at let's look at our armory first of all. The armory is where you manage your agents. Loadout, agent abilities, agent biography, and the armor tint as well. More slots become available in, in loadout by completing assembly projects. Promotions are awarded to agents based on their performance in combat. New ranks come with increased stats, abilities, and training programs, all of which you can see and manage here. The director convinced the city council we're too understaffed to be effective. This means we can bring more agents to City 31. It's not the whole squad, not yet, but it's something. Basically, you get to, this is the, one of the varieties you get is you, you get to basically choose which agents join at what time. Um, because you get a choice of three agents and you get to pick one of them, so until you get all the agents as you go, you go through, the agents you have as you go change. So we have three agents for, we're picking right now. Torque was a viper. Who is a, a goal is one of the, the snake men, basically. Or snake woman in this case. Um, <laughs> Roll. Moving enemies, allies, poison. Quotes. Sure, Whisper, can you quote this gesture? How about two? You get the health, mobility, aim, will, dodge, crit. Bind. Wraps up an enemy, dealing damage and preventing them from acting on their turn. Bound enemies cannot be targeted by XCOM for fear of damaging the agent. Reaction. Agent shoots out their tongue to grab a unit and pull them into melee range. Can be used on enemies and allies. Some oversized targets cannot be pulled. Then you have Shelter, who is a... Who is a psionic. Ally buffing mental attacks. I can't be your weapon, but I will be your shield. Swaps positions with the targeted enemy or ally. Does not automatically end the turn. Agent launches a psionic blast that disorients all enemies near the breach point. Targeted enemy is disoriented for an extra turn. One use permission. Um, Zephyr. Close quarters. Basically, punch punch. Agent punches an enemy and inflicts one of several status effects. The effect is either disarm, disorient, stun, or root. This attack cannot miss and will trigger momentum. Zephyr blitzes towards an enemy and melee attacks them after the breach. This will position Zephyr near the enemy. If the enemy was alert, their alert breach action is cancelled. So, Old World Origin. Siberia, Chile, Australia. Hatched at a new Arctic facility in 2020. Zero years old. Attached to Advent and learned to target and track down undesirable elements, hunted, then resistance groups. Actively fought resistance forces in XCOM for the war's duration, up to the age of 15. Offered to serve as Op 4, training for post-war XCOM soldiers in training because, in her own words, detention is boring and this way I can still fight XCOM. Placed under the direct supervision of Colonel Kelly, with whom she formed an unexpected bond. Requested a transfer after Colonel Kelly's promotion to director of the XCOM Reclamation Agency. Assigned to Chimera Squad with the director's approval. And shelter from Chile, lived on a farm with his parents, two siblings, and extended family. The 2015 invasion, separated from his family, collected and processed into a resettlement camp, exhibited signs of psionic aptitude, dropped into an Advent program studying the capabilities of human born scions, fled Advent after being forced to kill dozens of criminals with his psionic abilities, connected with a resistance group. They brought him on for his agricultural knowledge. He kept his psionic abilities secret. And then, in during the. So, this is 2015 is XCOM 1. And 2035 is XCOM 2. Relied on his psionic abilities to defend against a terror attack. To the present, reluctantly joined XCOM for formal psionic training. Transferred to the Reclamation Agency as it, at its inception. Requested placement in Chimera Squad at the behest of his fellow agents. And Zephyr, Australia. No confirmed past. Scattered records suggest she was an Australian, undergoing the hybrid amalgamation and psionic lathe procedure in 2021. 
officially created in 2021 per Advent Records, transferred to City 31, worked as a loyal Advent soldier under the Psionic Network, separated from the Psionic Network by the Skirmishers Resistance Faction, joined the Skirmishers and quickly rose in their ranks, operated primarily in the City 31's region. In 2035, fought Advent alongside XCOM for the duration of the war, was present for the fall of City 31. Left skirmishers at the war's end, applied to the Reclamation Agency after failing to uncover her human past, recommended for a Chimera squad by multiple XCOM soldiers once she once fought beside. Um, I like Torque. Torque is great fun because as a personality as well, Torque is good. So I think I'll pick Torque. I do like Torque. Torque. Whisper. Are we good? I don't know. Did you get a lobotomy? Can't say that I did. Then no, we aren't good. Well, at least things are back to normal. Here we have here, uh, Cadet Torque, Cadet Godmother, Cadet Terminal, Cadet Cherub, Cadet Verge. And you get the ancient abilities, you have, as you as you level up, you get to basically pick your abilities, um, your choices and so forth. Um, Scattershot. Uh... Safeguard and hack door, so it can hack a door at the start of the reach. Uh, kinetic shield, kinetic charge, charge bash. Neural network gains 10 aim for each enemy in the neural network. Certain abilities will add units to the neural network. Yes, 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 yes. You can also do the agent biographies. Uh, born in France, national tactical police officer with a few years of experience. Went to ground after the fall of Paris. Spent a fruitless year searching for her family. Provided operational training to the nascent European resistance groups strongly advised against direct resistance which she learned brought overwhelming reprisal raids connected with XCOM proper during its leaner years remained a friendly asset as the reorganization rebuilt itself in 2032 she developed a formalized tactical training program to screen for XCOM recruits and during the war she was a field liaison to allied resistance groups supporting XCOM modified the XCOM recruit training program to suit the needs of the reclamation agency joined Chimera squad provisionally to ensure field ready status then you have Terminal, only child of a factory worker and a cook. Parents died during the initial invasion. Her uncle fled with her to a relocation camp. After her uncle died of disease, she was effectively adopted by a doctor who lost her only daughter to the invasion. Transferred with her adoptive mother to a small town in the outskirts. Began apprenticing under her adoptive mother's medical office. After a punitive advent attack wiped out her town, a resistance group pulled her from the rubble and brought her to safety. She exhibited a severe shift in personality. Combat medic for her resistance group. Exhibited absolute fearlessness and saved hundreds of lives. Initially rejected for the reclamation agency, but requested regular Sonic probes to prove she is fit to serve. Assigned to Chimera Squad as a after a probationary period. Cherub was born in Estonia. Cherub belonged to the Empty Cohort, a batch of hybrid clones with full Advent training but no Advent indoctrination. Emerged from this clone crash, immediately befriended two XCOM soldiers. Zero years old, 18 physically. To present. Transferred to detention center. Exhaustive testing revealed no advent sympathies despite being part of the Bellas Mar clone line. Released from the detention and recommended as a test case for XCOM utilizing skills of the empty cohort. Transferred to the reclamation agency after proving his capability. Requested placement in Chimera squad at first opportunity. Reclamation HQ has observed his enthusiasm and proved the morale of the squad on multiple occasions. And Verge. Psionic support for infiltrated unit of thin men. Actively worked to subvert human governments. Experimented with delicate long-term mental control of human subjects. Assigned the long-term control of an inflational human who could keep the populace docile with comprehensible, reassuring answers to their questions about aliens. Selected as a candidate for conversion into sectoid infused with human genetic material. Post-conversion exhibited signs of empathy towards the human populace. Quietly began to tip off resistance groups. Served as a mole actively aiding the resistance groups and XCOM. And spent time in the detention camp until XCOM realized his role in the war. Agreed to reclamation agency transfer. Director Kelly approved his admission to Chimera Squad. So it's kind of cool. You get like 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 Verge and Torque fought against XCOM, um, and all this kind of stuff. And then like you get like uh, Godmother didn't fight in the war. Terminal was like in the resistance in the war. Cherub was basically freshly hatched. Um, loadouts. You can change their weapon, you can change their armor, they can add breach item utility items. I think Cherub still has a breaching charge. Um, our, temporary field office our supply, we can buy stuff basics. here. Weapons, comms, and ammunition. Hell yeah. Supply is where we request everything else. 
But as long as it's in the squad's budget, it's ours. Do you have yeah, credits are one of the three we're supposed to be. You can get a sweet deal on combat grade androids. I know. Everyone hates them. So we can buy um auto key cards to basically so we can hack in two doors if you don't have a terminal. Basically, everyone who's got like a breaching ability tends to have like supplant um an item they can use. Breaching charge, cease fire grenades, disables all firearms in a large radius, flashbang, med kit, um smoke grenades, tracer rounds, trank rounds. Basically turns people unconscious instead of killing them. Um we have 150 credits. Flashbang, and I'll get some tracer and get some trank rounds as well. Okay. Let's put some into loadout. Um terminal, get the trank rounds on you. Um you have the breaching charge. You can have the flashbang. I'll give you the ceasefire grenade for now. Bam. Right. And next time we'll do the progeny mission. I'll see you then, folks. Bye-bye.